we're going to be talking about the Angular Component Lifecycle Hooks. You guys might be surprised to see that this is my first Angular video, considering my t channel is Angular Evan, but hopefully you'll see more of these out of me here soon. With that being said, let's get started. Lifecycle hooks are functions that exist on a Angular controller that are called by the Angular lifecycle process as it goes through the uh, compile phase and the rendering and all that sort of thing. So with that being said, let's get started with the first lifecycle hook on changes. So the on changes lifecycle hook is performed when references change for a binding. This is done via one-way bindings or literal evaluations. So if the reference changes, let's say for an object that's bound into a component or a evaluation of an expression in the literal evaluation it changes, this function will be called on the controller. Angular passes ch a change object containing current, previous, and is first change function. It's very useful for creating pseudo immutability, which we'll cover a little bit later. The changes objects only contain the properties of those bindings that are changed. So if you have a user and application objects that are one way bound onto this component and the user reference changes, the change object will have a property called user and only that property. Is first change is a function assigned onto the change object. It will return true when the reference goes from undefined to defined and false from then on out. A helpful hint when using on changes is to create a clone of a binding in on changes and ensure that it is a deep clone. This will force immutability and the unidirectional data flow process so that if you make a change to that object reference, it won't reflect up to the parent and affect other components that you may not have intended to affect. Next, we're going to be covering on init. This is useful for initializing values necessary for the view. In addition, it ensures availability of bindings in application state during this function. It also centralizes the initialization of the view state into a single function. Next is the do check function. This allows you to customize an implementation of dollar on changes that we covered earlier. You can be more fine grained when acting upon changes, for instance, checking nested properties of a binding. This is executed on every digest cycle, so be wary as it has performance implications. Because it's being done on every digest cycle, it will be executing significantly more than your dollar on changes function would. You should not need an on changes function when utilizing do check as they perform the same responsibilities. Next is the post link function. This is equivalent to a directives link property. It gives access to the element after the link has been made from the DOM element to the component that's represented in the Angular lifecycle. One note of warning is this is not to be used for directive-like behavior. DOM manipulation should be minimal inside of components and dollar post link is most likely not the right approach for many of the scenarios. It is fine to use it for little things, but if you have more complex behavior, you should really be creating a separate directive. Lastly is the dollar on destroy function. This is equivalent to listening for the dollar destroy event on the scope object. It is called when the element scope object is destroyed. This is useful for cleaning up any event listeners and non angular logic slash resources. Meaning if you decided to listen for a particular event that wasn't done by angular in your post link, for instance, you should be able to remove that event listener at this stage of your next. We're going to cover what belongs in a constructor versus on init. I suggest using ES6 classes for Angular controllers. You can visit my blog to read more as to why. Constructors are made available to classes, but should not be used for much in Angular controllers. So what does belong in a constructor? Assignments of injected objects onto the class instance. So if you're passing in a service to your controller, you should assign it onto the this variable here as opposed to anywhere else. The initialization of any constant values that do not depend on Angular. So if you want to create a human readable variable name for a integer constant, you can do that here. What belongs in on init? The initialization of values based on values or bindings from Angular. So any of those services that you assign onto the constructor um, can be used here to create other values necessary for the view. One time service calls should also be done here. 
So if you imagine fetching a resource from a server and then displaying that, that service call should be executed in your on init. The instantiation of display objects and default values for fields should also be done in on init. So if you have uh, input fields in your component, you can do the default values here. Why does this all matter? The dollar on init function ensures that parent components are available at the time the component is added to the DOM. This means that components that use require by the component are then ready. So if a parent is not properly in, uh, um, created by the Angular lifecycle, you may not have access to it in the constructor. It also helps clean up the class notation, separating what is required for the controller to function, aka the constructor, and what is required by the view in Angular in dollar on. Next, we're going to talk about on changes firing before on init and why. So on init executes after on changes, which may seem odd to a lot of people, given that on init means on initialization. But to me, it really makes sense, and here's why. So on changes is typically used to manipulate binding data. One usually creates a copy of the object and then molds it into a given object structure that is then used by the component throughout. So component helper functions are going to expect this formatting to already have occurred, otherwise you're going to end up having to manipulate it before calling this helper function. So a practical example of this is the following class. You can see in on init, I'm setting a user to the response of a massage data function, and I'm also doing the same thing on changes to pick up if the the binding ever changes reference that I'll have a properly massage data object for my component. If on it on init fires first, we have to massage the data to build the display name. However, since on changes fires first, this dot user is already set to the response of massage data. Thus, we can eliminate on init entirely from the controller. This is obviously a simplified version, but once you get used to how the lifecycle hooks work, it really makes sense. For more in-depth discussion on these things, I suggest checking out Todd Moto's link, as well as the Angular docs. Both of these are very, very good documentation uh, references. Um, and lastly, I created a code pen which has an example controller and a parent in order to show how the events work, what order they're fired in, and exactly what happens during these lifecycle hooks. As always, you can feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter, and also keep up to date on my blog. I hope to see you for the next video.